Hello, everybody. Uh, we are waiting for uh, all the people joining. So, um, in this um, uh, starting phase, um, I, we just uh, we can talk to each other and and uh, see if uh, something that could be interesting for you. Uh, we we can talk about that. So the first webinar will be dedicated to uh, the influence of uh, Middle Eastern music in jazz and jazz and interconnections. So um, I try I try to put together a, um, a path that could be interesting for uh, musicians and not only. Um, uh, talking about how this, this music called jazz was influenced, but not only, I will, I will, I'm a writer, I'm a composer, I'm a guitar player. Uh, I try to be a guitar player. And, and, um, and, as a, a 20th century a music uh, uh, scholar, uh, I always, I, I wrote a big book that it's called uh, Thousand Records for a Century, which is a, a history of the Western music through the records. So I, I, I always uh, uh, thought that music, first of all, uh, one of the most silly thing that usually we say about music is that music is a universal language. Um, I maintain, and I am pretty sure that music is everything except a universal language. Um, it's not an, it, it, it cannot be an universal language, otherwise everybody could understand every kind of music in every place because universal, it means just universal. So, um, uh, and uh, in a philosophical way, I also doubt that there is a language too. But this is a, another question that we don't touch today. Otherwise, we, we risk to, to stay on that topic for the whole hour. But we can talk about it. If you want, we can stay in touch also after this webinar and Fni can, can, will, will, Give you my address if 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 you need it, and we can talk about that. And because I think that um, this is something that comes really from 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 the past, especially was a, a Western century uh, European or uh, American U.S. Uh, mainly idea uh, about. Uh, the uh, uh, to be the music to be uh, a universal language because uh, it's eurocentrical uh, point of view because we write so wonderful music through the centuries and so our music is so wonderful and Beethoven is so great everybody has to understand Beethoven but we know that's not true it's it's impossible how could it be and um, uh, but but. I don't know if I'm a jazz musician, but I play jazz uh, in jazz context. I made, I participated to more than seventy records in my career, and and um, uh, what I understand understood about jazz mainly is that probably jazz is the most ecumenical type of music. Is the most uh, oh I don't sometimes I, I don't remember the word in English uh, so be patient with me. Um, uh, do you know permeability? When when something is you can get in so I will I, I uh, permeability is the main quality of jazz. And this is this is what is very strange to me is that. I always have to face people thinking that a form of pure jazz does exist. How is possible? It's not possible because 
jazz is something that is pure in its impurity. You know what I mean? Is something that ex does exist exactly because it was so open to uh, flexibility, to all the culture coming in. Uh, jazz is not an Afro-American form of art. It is something that was created, that was born in the, in, in the United States in somewhere, sometimes in between the, 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 the late 18th century, uh, 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century is not something that happened in New Orleans. This is another thing that, you know, the, the chips uh, music history tells always all, all the time. It's something that was spread around all, all the United States, especially in the south, states of the South. But it was a connection between uh, French uh, instrumentation of the, of the, of the um, marching bands with the clarinets and saxophones and trumpets and trombones. That was something that really doesn't exist in Africa. There was uh, something that was, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the base was the blues. And the blues is based on three chord cycle, which is the same chord cycle that we can find in many, 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 many popular music in Europe. Uh, with, a, with, a, with a slight difference, as you probably know, oh, uh, how many uh, musicians usually play jazz here? Or, do, or, or they don't know, or they, they know um, um, blues forms or stuff like that. Okay, ciao, ciao. Okay, so uh, because the main difference I have here, uh, guitar. Uh, so if I play, mm -hmm. this is a G seven. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it, usually in Western music, this brings to uh, mm -hmm. or C major or C minor. Mm -hmm. So it's the fifth degree, but in blues, this goes to another seven chords on the fourth degree. So this is strange. It shouldn't, it shouldn't happen that. And, and the same with the fifth degree. So the cycle that we have is something that we can find in the Irish music. We find it in, in what in Italy is called Liscio, which is uh, dancing music uh, from, from, um, uh, from, uh, uh, Emilia Romagna, which is a uh, middle north, middle of, of Italy, and uh, you can find it in, in, in French music. You can find it in, in Spanish music. So it's something that we can find this in, in many, many, many places, many, many kind of different music. But this uh, use of the seventh is something that happened just in blues. It happens, and uh, and also the scales that goes on. Is something that is in between the major and the minor. So, and and, and this is something that uh, really we cannot find it in European in Western European music. So, when in the south of in the in the uh, United States, we uh, all these cultures came together, and they meet and they crosses their paths to together. Immediately, we were in front of something that was uh, without any barrier. And I think, and I would say that probably uh, jazz music is the main result of this connection between cultures. So it's not, it's not music that comes from a, a ethnic culture, but something that comes from the crossing of ethnic, ethnic cultures. And this went through the world century and today it still continues to go on goes ahead and this is the be most beautiful thing that I can I can I can feel about jazz music so how um, an idiom uh, um, 
a, a style, a genre, could be, could be pure if it lives of continuous interconnection. I, I don't like uh, to use uh, uh, other words because uh, contamination usually is, is used by music journalists, critics and stuff. I don't like contamination. Contamination is something that's bad. Because it's if you are contaminated, it's it means that probably something wrong happened. But I think that interconnection and permeability are the key uh, for evolution. And uh, uh, I know uh, many musicologists. When I talk with, they don't like too much my point of view. Maybe some of you will not like it too. But uh, uh, I, I like to, to to talk about that because. Uh, um, I don't find any other way to explain what jazz is except for being uh, uh, a music that uh, it's open without barrier, barrier. So then we have pronunciation, then we have the rhythm, then we have the chord progressions, then we have all everything you want. But the basis, the roots, is to be open to other cultures. And that's why we are here today talking about uh, our, our two trips, two travels. One is in a Mediterranean area, and the other one is, is the Balkanic and, and, and the Gypsy culture. Um, um, I prepared some, I hope, interesting uh, listening uh, snippets that um, I, I think that the best way to proceed, we talked before, um, uh, it's to share in our chat box the links. So um, you can listen, we can listen to some seconds of this music together, everybody by themselves. Then we can talk about it. You can make questions, you can have, you can, and I'll try to explain what I like in this music and why I think these are important that they are just some samples then it would be nice if you will save these links and you will go and listen to the whole tracks or uh, to facilitate the thing probably uh, oh surely I, I will send <laughs> to Fanny uh, the uh, the chart with, with the links so you will have the whole thing together also something that maybe we will not listen today because we have only something like 40 minutes, something like that. So you, you, will, you will get some, some material that, and um, as I said before, as I'm, some new uh, people get in, um, uh, you, can, you, can, you can contact me if you have special questions. And if I know, I don't know if I know, but if I know, I could try to, question, to, to answer to your questions. So, Uh, probably the, the, the most uh, uh, the, the connection between between uh, the uh, music of uh, Middle East and jazz is, 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 a, is a long trip. It comes from a long time ago because uh, still in the first uh, compositions of uh, Duke Ellington, we can hear some influences from, from uh, uh, Middle Eastern scales, which is, uh, we could say that the main mode is uh, the uh, fifth mode of the harmonic scale. For example, uh, if I play in A, it's... Um, okay, and... and uh, uh, this brings to, uh, oh, my guitar, it's time to change the strings. And uh, in, in, on uh, uh, D minor chord, which is uh, uh, in the, for example, in uh, the Mooch or many other uh, songs by Duke Ellington in, in the late twenties, we already, we can immediately feel that that vibe, that that connection, that that flavor, that brings uh, us to 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 
to to feel the wind of the Middle East. And um, but uh, there's a big celebration in '67 by Duke Ellington uh, because. He, he had a great sense of humor too, and and, and he wrote this uh, suite, which is called which called which is called Far East Suite, and this is a link. And one of the songs that I really love is called Mount Harissa. So it, it, it talk about souls probably, and and uh, it it this is very nice and. This is from 67, so it's, uh, we, we would say, a recent composition, but it's the Wall Street, it's, um, it, it, it's incredible. This is incredible. And uh, the first song, it, um, it reflects his, uh, his sense of humor and also his respect. Because the first song is called From... Uh, um, uh, a tourist point of view. So he says, okay, I do this, but it's something like, you know, I'm just a tourist. So uh, I think this was a very, very declaration of respect. And, and uh, but this is what I feel. And, and this trip goes through the Middle East, through India until Japan. And, and, uh, and, and uh, I, I hope that uh, you will like it. If you want to listen to this, I think I, I will point directly to the song Mount Teresa here. Yes. Okay. Um, then, um, Let's try to make the trip on the other side. Uh, who were the first musicians in uh, Middle East or North Africa working, dealing with jazz? And uh, we have many, many interesting uh, artists. I, I have to say I have I really like um, uh, music from Ethiopia and uh, my, one of my favorite artists is probably, you know him, is Mulapa Statkin. This is great. This is a wonderful record that you probably, you should, you should get this record. And uh, Mulato Statkin. This Mulato of Ethiopia. He was living in New York. So he was playing with, in, the, in the late 50s with the great jazz musicians. But this record who came out for Strat, uh, this was the first edition is from 72. This is the first record of Mulatto. Uh, and um, he plays uh, vibes and, and keyboards and, uh, and there's a big band. And I think it, it's, it's something, well, this is a... This is, you know, now it's my, 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 this is the nerd, nerd moment. You see the, the triple box uh, with, uh, okay. Now, you know, I'm crazy. Okay. Uh, for, 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 for binding. Um, so, uh, and not only. So, um, Mulatto was incredible. You can, uh, I don't know if you have a, you have to watch the, that movie. The title is Broken Flowers. Uh, by, uh, ooh, wait, I'm getting old. Jim Jarmusch. Uh, 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 it's a wonderful movie. And, and the music is all by Mulatu Astatki. Then there's another, another guy who just, is just tangent, is just a uh, uh, close, to jazz, but it's more in, in the rock world, but it's incredible. It's, it's probably the, the main connection between two words. And it's a Turkish guy that was playing in the 70s. He was a close friend of John Lennon, for example. And his name is Erkin Koray. This is 
probably his best record, Electric Turculaire. This is incredible. Uh, is an interconnection between uh, jazz, uh, sorry, psychedelic music. You can, you, you could, it's like listening to Pink Floyd uh, playing with uh, Arab scales, you know, this is uh, it, it, it very, very, very outside, spacey. It's one of my, uh, if somebody, I know somebody knows my guitar playing here because I see some faces I know. And and, uh, and I really I really like to play in that way. Uh, Erkin Koray is one of my uh, fundamentals in uh, making music, especially if I use, if I play on, on pedals. So the main thing here, you know everybody here because everybody here is, is music, music players or uh, composers or music teachers. So uh, I will not, if you have some questions, please. But I think it's not necessary to explain that the main thing here in, our, uh, in the harmonic field is that probably most of the music that was at the beginning conceived on this was uh, thought on pedals, in, on model uh, approaches, not uh, in the harmonic traditional Western way culture and way of composing. But if you need some explanation, I will be happy to also with the guitar or... Uh, uh, when, when, when Fanny and, and uh, Angelo proposed me these two webinars, I was thinking, what is the connection between the two words, except for jazz? And I thought that probably, what what's the main what's the main element that we can nail to say what is uh, uh, what is this and what is that? So I will I will say that probably with the with the uh, Middle East and jazz connection. We work and we are more concentrated on the melodic and microtonal uh, uh, field. And uh, uh, with the Bal Balkan, it's more on the rhythm and the um, interconnection between uh, the weight of the melody and the rhythm. I, I, I talk about weight because it's something, you know, it's the melody when you go through a pedal or through an harmony, it's more important, you know, in, in the common sense, you know, you use the, one, the tonic or the third and the fifth, and they are the main notes. But sometimes if you work on microtonal things, the things can change. <laughs> So the place rhythmically the place and uh, uh, where I where I put the notes and how I land on a, on a, on a particular place in, in rhythm it's the way that uh, to me that uh, tells to me if you know that story really or if you are faking it I don't know if this is clear it's something that has to do with, uh, uh, it's like, it's like in swing. Uh, if I, if I swing a phrase like this, this is a correct spelling. If I do, this is wrong. The notes are exactly the same. 
the melodic pattern, pattern is exactly the same, but there's a slight difference in pronunciation. And this difference, uh, it's what it tells me and what, if it works or not. Oh, let me, Alessandra wrote, and the song goes away. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alessandra. I'm sorry, I, I have to do one thing. I, I have this one month that I, I'm not able to, to, to go out so from of this uh, cold. So, uh, um, I hope this, uh, uh, this example I did with the guitar is clear. Um, uh, I can, I can, I can play it. Do you have the sound? Okay. If I play, it's one thing. If I play, it's another thing, but it's the same. And if I do, oh, sorry. And I change something in the rhythm and it works still. And if I play in laid, in laid back, everything change in, in our perception of the same, the same pattern, rhythm pattern. Uh, so um, for me, the key of understanding the connection between, oh, we use it languages just to, as a shortcut, okay? Because I don't think it, they are the real languages. Uh, but uh, we could say uh, expressions, or a way of tell the story, okay? It's like when you talk in a dialect and uh, you can tell if that people who talks with you is exactly from your area or somebody who is uh, coming in from a different place. And you can, you, you, you can tell it by something that sometimes it's very hard to explain what it is, but you can tell it. So jazz is wonderful because you have so many ways to of tell a story and nobody can tell you are, you are faking it. And, but on the other side, but on the other side, uh, we have, um, we have something that we can feel right or wrong. And sometimes interconnections bring to more, um, uh, I would say, um, uh, not believable uh, approaches. So uh, let's go back. Um, uh, in reverse, one of the first musicians that really deal with jazz was uh, a musician from uh, Egypt. His name is Salah Ragab. Sorry if my pronunciation sometimes is, is um, bad, especially with the Arab names. Uh, I don't know almost anything about it. So I, I, I'm here to learn. So, um, for example, this is very nice. It's called Egypt strut, strut. So let me check. Uh, oh, yeah, this is, and this is. So this is uh, something that. Uh, reminds me it was recorded between 68 and 73 this song if you want to listen to that while talk while i talk um and it's based on a herbie hancock composition called watermelon man and uh, with a new melody that it's clearly uh, oh sorry uh, which is clearly uh, based on, on the on the uh, harmonic minor scale. Then the guy, the Turkish guy, if you didn't took note, we talk and I show the record is this one, Erkin Koray. Okay. 
So one of my favorite um, uh, uh, works of uh, interconnection between European jazz and uh, uh, North African uh, Middle East uh, through India project is this one. And uh, they recorded a wonderful record for ECM called Madar. And uh, if you, if you, I, I'm in love with this record, really. And uh, um, I think that Young Garbrek here is, uh, it is really something always, but here it, works perfectly with this who was one of, who is one of my favorite uh, uh, North African musician Anwar Brahem is a wood player uh, I was so in love with his music that I, I went to Tunisia to buy a wood after that and I started to play in, in, the, in the 90s and um, uh, and here with uh, this Shaukat Shaukat Hussein, uh, he is from Pakistan, he is a tabla player. So they put together this three world. And in fact, in the, in the cover, there's a triangle because it's something like, the, you know, it's a, a very, very, and um, here there's a live version of the, of the music they play in Madar. Uh, I really like this. This is great. This is music, uh, healing music really healing music for what I feel. Uh, um, but if you want to listen to uh, the uh, um, Barzak, the name, the title is, this is the, the record by, I, I, I love more by Anwar Brahem. And uh, And also this one, this is great too. I love this because in this uh, in this in this piece, Anwar Brahem, it makes it is it, it, able to make a strange connection between uh, uh, Tunisian music, North African, and the gypsy music. Uh, the title you can see the title uh, 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 and and this is uh, another another play this is what i meant at the beginning of our uh, uh webinar uh permeability the ability to be uh able to to to, to connect the things and to uh avoid to create new barrier and music if it's not an, an universal language, as I said, as probably the universal thing is, the only universal thing is, is that this should be, is a uh, is way to, to create interconnection between uh, cultures and musics and without, without barrier. So uh, another uh, wood player, who was very popular. I remember him in the 90s. I saw him a couple of times. He's from Lebanon, Lebanon. And his name is Rabi Abu Khalil. Uh, my favorite record, I think, is Roots and Sprouts. Uh, let me check it. Okay. Okay. Let's do a question. I, I put this. Yes, thank you. Um, My pleasure. I wanted to know more. Early on, you said that uh, you could say if someone was really knowing the music or faking it because of the phrasing. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know more about this because mm. I don't know a lot about Eastern music, Middle East music, and uh, yeah, I would like some specifics about that. Yeah, um, this is um, um, something that 
Usually it comes out when I speak with classical trained musicians. They think that they are able to play anything. And, and this is silly in, in, the, in the starting point, you know, for me. I come from popular music. I, I'm an, I would say a blues guitar player. Uh, for maybe, uh, uh, and I became an, maybe an avant-garde player. I don't know what it is. And, uh, um, but for me, um, there's a one, oh, maybe the best, the best reply is in a DVD uh, from, uh, by, it's called George Harrison Celebration, so anniversary, something like that. It was a concert that was put together uh, to celebrate the figure of um, uh, George Harrison, uh, I think a couple of years after his death. And it was put together by Eric Clapton and all the musicians, and Ravi Shankar was there. And Ravi put together a, a, with his wonderful uh, daughter, uh, Anushka, uh, uh, he, he put together a suite to celebrate her. George Harrison. You know, George was a sort of adoptive child for Ravi Shankar. So, uh, and it's incredible because in the second DVD, in the first one, there's the concert. And the second one, there's the rehearsal and all the stuff. And there was uh, these strings musicians from... London Symphony Orchestra or something like that. And, and, and they became crazy because uh, Ravi was singing the, the parts to them and, and they were not able to, yeah, to transcribe everything. So uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a musician that was the knee player who, who helped Ravi to communicate with the musicians that were perfectly trained to play very complex music, but they were, they were, they had some troubles to, uh, to get the message directly from the singing. Uh, in jazz, this, uh, uh, Miles Davis was used to say that he was able to understand if a musician was white or black, we are talking about in the sixties, uh, because white musicians just usually put a tag at the end of the phrase. And when I was young, I, did, I wasn't able to understand what it really meant. Because what it means to put a tag at the end of a phrase, to a tag, T-A-G. Yeah, what does it mean in fact? <clears throat> now I understand what it is probably, uh, but it's not a matter of white and black. Because I remember there was a blindfold test in the 60s, late 60s, in 69, and uh, they made him listen to Sun Ra who is one of my favorite musicians. I don't know if you know San Ra, is uh, is uh, incredibly uh, big orchestra and arrangements and everything and dancing and, 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 uh, and, uh, and he say, what the hell is this? They play so bad. Not even a white man could play so bad. You know, so it was sometimes that I think that it's not something that you can say exactly what it is, but you can feel it. Um, in the blues uh, field, I can tell if a blues musician is a blues musician or is something who is playing the blues. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's something that has, has not, nothing to do with the, the country, with, with uh, being white, red, uh, purple, or anything you want, to be male or female, or anything else, um, uh, or to be, to be uh, bold or hairy, yeah, has nothing to do with that. It's something that has more to do with uh, sensibility. And uh, that's why I think sometimes when we play together, I have no we have no problem to talk to, to to play with some musicians and with some others we need to to explain so many times what we really like and the or they have to explain to us what they need from us we are not able to give it to them it's uh, um i would say that probably 
uh, in a way, uh, a, a natural uh, affinity is sometimes it's necessary to avoid to be uh, to appear faking. Uh, it's it, it will need it will need some hours to explain that or, or to play together. It's very easy when a. Uh, um, This is a, a way of playing the rhythm as they were playing in Ch in Chicago, um, and this is more as in, in in the in the late thirties in Texas. It was more uh, the rhythm is a little bit different, and uh, also the one and the three are perfectly in in the line of the beat and the two and the four here they are a little bit laid back so it's like uh, it's not and if you can tell the difference with just one listening that's all if you cannot tell the difference oh we don't hear me play you don't hear me. I'm sorry. Why? It works. Mm, poco. Oh, I'm so sad. Maybe, 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 maybe I could make a recording and explain this. Oh, that's why. And that's there's a way to avoid. Ah, after a few seconds, it works. <laughs> Uh, there's no way to uh, cancel the, the the compressor. Too bad. Can you hear me? Oh, more close. I will come in your in your mouth. Maybe, okay. And the other way, uh, can you hear it now? Okay, this is um, now one, two, three, and four are exactly in the, in the high point of the BPM. You know, okay. Oh. Okay, and now uh, one and three will be uh, uh, um, softer than two and four. Can you hear it? Okay, but uh, this is a modern way of playing that. Usually, in in Chicago in the 30s, they were playing like this. The two and the four was a little bit behind the beats, and the one and three was exactly on the beat. So this is uh, this a little laid back was. In, in Texas, for example, if you listen to the, oh yes, the break, in, in a few minutes, funny, give me a one second and I end it, and I will end. Um, um, this was uh, more uh, exaggerated. So the two and the four was, they were more displaced, rhythm displaced. So it was like, uh, 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 this gives a lot of pushing the rhythm. So if you play, uh, I don't know now if you will listen to that. But... And if you play like that, 
also the soloists will play not but it will play which is a little bit you know you, you can you can feel it it's a little bit this little differences tells if you know the story or if you don't know it I hope this will clarify the, the, the question. But it's, it's, it's a matter of microseconds. And, and I know people who plays who don't, are not able to, to catch that difference. Okay, so we are ready for the next webinar. I hope to see you, all of you, to the next one. Oh, do you need any resources to explain this phrase? My next book. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I didn't wrote it yet. But this could be uh, this could be interesting topic. I think that maybe Rick Beato wrote uh, made something about that. I, I have to check it out, and I will send to Fanny if I find something. Okay. See you. See you in uh, ten minutes. Something like that. It's.